what up people how's it going this is Bharat here welcome back to yet another video this quick video is actually going to be a part two of sorts from the previous video we did on deno rest apis so we did create a very simple basic rest api in a previous video so this video we're going to be doing one step further create a rest api and make sure that we're connecting it with our flutter application and checking how it pans out so technically you have a very simple flutter application running and you're going to connect to your own server and you see how the data is going to be transferred between them that's the whole idea for this video it's actually very simple and i'm going to be taking you guys through the steps so hopefully you guys can uh, check it out yourself as well so let's get this video straight away started all right so the first things first what we did in the previous video you i will be giving a very simple introduction to what happens we created something called we made use of something uh, called as a deno framework which is based on a typescript language we created a very simple sub server uh, hosted the server in our local host and created a simple route to get basic data so this is going this was the idea for the previous video we did it less than 10 minutes in the previous video so i'm going to be taking the uh, code from there and continuing on that but it's also very simple to create so if you're creating for the first time you can do it very easily as well so i'll just go through these three files here we created three files called server route and controller uh, starting with the server where we created our application making use of the oak uh, middleware which is as part of the standard application from deno so we used that we created the application we also created one route called as the response route which would get give some response when the user went and clicked on that specific url so what what was the response the response was very simple it was going to say that this is the entire server response so basically this is the whole setup that we did in the previous video this is very simple so we're going to take it one step further and create what we call as a rest api wherein the user is going to be now getting a list of data or maybe a json of data and how does it going to be useful in a real world application that's the whole idea so let's get this data we started so first things first what we need is to make sure we are returning some data right let's do it in this way let's first of all create a simple like interface and i will be creating an interface i'll call it as items item maybe and in the item i'm going to be having uh, three important uh, keys the first key is going to be i'll have a key called as uh, name maybe item name is important right so we have to give it it's uh, the the data type for that followed by the uh, maybe quantity or something like that or maybe cost cost is much better right cost cost have to be a number followed by the final thing is going to be let's give it a quantity it should also be a number also so we have created a very simple uh, interface and we're going to be making use of this interface and creating our own uh, data so what usually happens is that you'll be hooking this to a database but i'll show you guys how the data is going to be transferred so let's we have to first of all create the data right so let's go with the uh, called as variable called as items and we need to be making sure that we are giving it a proper so we need to say it's an item of meaning a list of items so we'll start with the list of items the first starting with the first one wherein we're going to be giving the name of the item followed by the cost maybe something like this and the quantity maybe 20 three or something like that so you need to correct the cost Let, let's give it a cost of 15 let's call it milk so maybe this is the item that user wants to buy now if you have to create multiple multiple fields like this let's go ahead and do that and this is going to be biscuit let's price it at 25 that is 250 quantity of that followed by the final is going to be water it has to be cheap so let's give it five and let's say 1000 packets of water something like that so this is going to be the data that you would be using to this is going to be the data that you are going to be using for your server and it's going to be fetched or sent to whoever is calling our rest api so we have what we have done here is just constructed the basic structure for the data and we are now going to be showing it to the user but how are you going to show it to the user now we have the data but what is the user's route going to be the user's route is going to be very simple we're just going to be calling it api again slash api slash v1 well let's call it uh, get all um, maybe shop items so this is going to be the name of the uh, the url with the, the route 
and it has to call some application name here like our method name here right so you're gonna go and do that so we we'll just quickly create a simple get all shop items method we have to give it a response there is no params here for this and you need to say what is the response the response can be anything so if it follows that route we are supposed to be returning success is equal to true and the data success is going to be true and the data is now going to be our list of items so we just need to return the list of items as part of the data you needn't worry about making it into a json or anything of that sort automatically it takes care of deserializing your serializing your data I mean, technically making a json to a string and attaching it to our rest api response and sending it out it takes care of doing that now we have to go here make sure to also export your get all and go here and obviously return it so it um, i'm sorry should have been should have also be making sure to import it and give it here technically that's it done so let's quickly go over it i did i know that i did do some things very faster if you guys are very new to deno you would find it a little bit difficult to pick up of what is happening i'll just go through the flow here the first thing that happens is that when you take care of a server you're hosting a server on the route or the port of 8001 and what you do next is that you're going to say whatever route is going to be available so what are technically routes so you have something called as a user's request coming in and you need to make some process in between and give that user's request some response so what happens is that there's something called as a middleware which will take care of taking care of finding the equivalent route for the user's request so user wants to fetch all data the middleware will take care of routing that all data request to a specific response and that's the whole idea behind middleware so that's what we are also doing here so what we have done is we have created two routes the first route is a very simple route we did in the previous video that it was for generic response to check if the server is running the second now what we have created now is to just assume that we have a server for a shop kind of a work and we're going to be returning all the items in the shop so technically that's what is happening here so we've just created a sample or we mimicked a basic data that should have been returned and we're just attaching it to the server and finishing it technically a server portion is done what requires is that you just have to save it up and check if it's running first of all that's what we're going to be doing oh shit all right so let's get this thing and we're going to be checking which running so deno run hyphen hyphen halav hyphen net server at ts so i've already i think it's cached okay the server is running well so what we can do now uh, is that the another important point you don't have to have your data connected your wi-fi turned on just go to google and uh, just hit the basic local host 8001 to check if your server is running let's do it 8001 uh, we'll call it api slash v1 slash uh, let's watch the router we gave Did you see that? Automatically serializes it for you. You don't have to worry about anything that is present there. And that's pretty how, that's very fast, basically. So our server is up and running. We need to now see how to hook this into our Flutter application. So that's the whole idea intention for this video. I already have the basic application running. I mean, I already have the basic code for Flutter. I don't want to waste so much time in building that. So I'm going to be making use of a couple of important uh, uh, your pub spec YAML dependencies. One is going to be the HTTP which I've already imported, I've done the packages get, so make sure to call HTTP to a packages get. And second is a very simple, again, a Dart convert uh, uh, package. So what you're going to do is just go to live main dot and here is where the magic happens. So what you're going to be making use of is the HTTP, Dart's HTTP package or the library to call a get request or make a get request to our local host. So our, uh, technically what you have, what you've done is our server is running here and we're going to be connecting to a local host and checking to transfer data. So technically this is what happens. Let's assume that you're removing and replacing your local host with a remote server. So technically you're just contacting the remote server. Instead, what we're going to do now is replace the remote server with a local host and transfer data. So that's going to be the whole idea. Let's do the first step here, which is to actually create a simple method that's going to get or fetch our data from the uh, your local host. Let's call it, for example, for now, let's keep it as wide. Let's call this get all shop items. No need of any input to this. So what is going to do is going to be response. 
is going to await for HTTP.GET and we now have to give, so it will start throwing all calls kind of stuff here. It just create local variable, do, 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 all the chart. Just don't worry about it for now. We need to first make sure that we get giving a proper get request and that is what is going to be our intention here. So what is the local host? Well, you could just give it like this, HTTP uh, local host. So this is the you, you, you are path here, right? So will you be giving this? And do you think it will work? So a couple of important information here. If you give local host, there is no way for Flutter to resolve the local host uh, and connect it to our uh, local host IP. Instead, what you have to do is instead of the text or the word local host, you need to give it an IP called as 10.0.2.2, 10 which is the actual local host IP that the Flutter itself resolves to or the HTTP care package resolves to. So that's very important here. So instead of local host, make sure to replace it 10.0.2.2 and obviously follow this structure that's given here. So you've given the path, you've given the basic route and you're now expecting some response. So obviously from here on, it's the basic Flutter code. All you have to do is start making it work. So obviously if there's an await, you have to make it in a sync function once step is done. It says that I don't have anything. Let's give it a variable. Let's give it a variable if you want to. It is very happy now. Now the next step that you have to do is make sure we know what it's, this is going to return. This is not going to return anything extraordinary. It's going to return a very simple uh, data called as response. Response should have two important stuff. It One is that it's going to have a status which is what we are returning here, which is the success or the 200 or 400 that's going to come. And the second one is going to be the data, which is what this, all this information is going to be present. So we're going to be doing that. So what we're going to do is just check if my response dot status is equal to 200. I'm going to say is return my response dot uh, maybe body body should do all right so this is very basic right it says that string has to be returned but it's a void we'll come to that now so what next we're going to do is make sure we're going to create a future of because it's going to happen sometime in the future and it's going to return a string so basically you're done with that so that's one if it's not if it's not what you're going to do is just throw an error or just throw an error saying the request to the URL was a bummer. So technically our API did not work. So this, that's what I've told it here. All right, so we've created a simple method uh, and it's connecting to the local host as well. Our next step you're gonna do is obviously make this work. So what we have to do is just go to your text. I've just created something called the result here. What it'll do is just create a simple future builder operator, a future builder widget. And that's where the magic comes into picture. You're going to say future builder of string, obviously, and you're going to create, give the keys, just make it happy. Uh, awesome, it's done the work for us to give the future, right? The future is going to be this method here. Make sure to give that method, run the method. And technically now we have to do with, what does it say? I've created, oh my god, I've created it in the base class instead of doing it here. Cool, so that's it. And it says that I need to start writing something. So we are going to do is if the snapshot has data, then show the data. So technically I need to return the text and the text is going to have snapshot dot data let's see how this goes first if not i need to return a circular progress indicator is it happy now yes it's happy and we have achieved what we wanted to achieve so what technically is happening is we are making use of the usual future builder operator future builder widget and creating the data but i don't want the data to be this way i don't want it to be sending it exactly from how the the cloud is or the, the server is sending. Instead, I'm just gonna make sure that I'm decoding it back to JSON, which is what I'm making, going to be using, uh, making use of the JSON uh, library. Just do snapshot data and you will have access 
to this portion here. So we will go here. So technically we have the user, the server sending this. We can now access the entire data here as a list through this way. So I can now do zero, it will access that. And so technically what I'm going to do is just take it a bit more. Like I'm going to make sure that I'm returning a proper text. Now let's check which work first for working. I also have a floating action button. I don't know why I have that. And I think it came as part of the base structure. Let's fire up the AVD. Well, it's, technically it's done, it's working, but I can, as you can see, it did throw a lot of errors. I'll show you one of the errors that it will throw. When trying to do a json.decode, it will not accept a dynamic hash map. Uh, what it really means is that where you saw that, say for example, if you do two string and you see that this data here is technically a map of data. So what you have to do instead is to now go and specifically get the required key, which is name here. So if I do this, it will work fine. It will say milk. Similarly, if I do, uh, I think price, I don't remember the name that I gave. All right, cost. It throws an error saying that the key is wrong. Okay, it's an int. So I got to do two string again. So as you can see, it's taking the native data type from the server that it created, localhost that it created, and it's trying to render it on the Flutter application. Technically, that's the entire application and the video for uh, this video. That, that's the entire thing that we learned in this video. And uh, probably in the next video, we'll start doing some complex stuff as well. So probably what you've learned in a quick recap is that we've created up the server using Deno, created a simple REST API, and hit that REST API using our Flutter application in just under 10 minutes, I guess. So probably that's it for this video. Hopefully you did learn something new. Uh, if you did, do not forget to smash that subscribe button. Let me meet you in the next video, something really useful and informative on more topics of Deno and Flutter. Until then, Sparath, peace out. Have a super awesome day.